this is good times for me. And <laughs> it's hard not to get excited about that part. <laughs> so today we have Mr. Diego. We're gonna be doing a modified cut on him today. So short on the body, a little longer on the legs. As you, you can tell he's a little chopped up. He's a little chopped. <laughs> not sure what happened previous to this, but. <laughs> We're gonna attempt to fix it today. This is gonna be a restoration. Rehabilitation. <laughs> 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 so that's, that's the goal today, is to fix them. Yes, it looks like you're right. <laughs> Good luck, Chelsea. <laughs> I'm just gonna zoom in on his little face real quick. Diego, look at that face, y'all. Right, a little short up here, a little long down here. It does look like Chanel's. Oh, yeah. yeah, really short on the sides. Not sure what they were aiming for here. <laughs> That's okay, we'll fix it. <laughs> so we're gonna be doing a half inch on his body. Do you wanna use my wipe comb? I have all my tools in the car. Stop it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hold on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Show them and what you're using. Toys. I'm just, you know, <laughs> stealing them. So they are the double wide. I've seen a couple people on the um, Facebook, uh, what do you call it? Groups? Yeah, use them, but they are amazing. So I'm going to be getting me some. That one is the Fur Zone brand. They have them on Amazon. It's the 30 wide, and then the she's using the half inch uh, and it was cord a, comb. Oh. They have a set for the A comb through the two comb with the 30 wide for 130 on Amazon. The brand is Fur Zone, but we'll probably put it in the description. And then you can get the C and the E separate. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna be doing the half inch on the body. You guys, I tried this shampoo off of Amazon, and I am completely disappointed with it. That shampoo over there called and then uh, Green Group. Naturally different. Alright, does anybody use that? Because it's it's just horrible. It has <laughs> nothing for the hair. It leaves them kind of gritty feeling. Oh, it smells good. It does smell good, but it just doesn't do a job. Because <laughs> it's not doing what I need to do for the coat. We usually use ultimate uh, at work and I I've been using Ultimate for years now, but you can't get it anywhere because of COVID. Everywhere sold out. Right? Yeah. And you're that leaving it, right? Yeah. So, no, it's great. Yeah, guys, those guard combs are amazing. And it's not even so much that the size, like I was telling them, the size, yeah, it's great. Like, you do it faster. But really, just the brand of the 30 cuts so much better. I always use the Andy's 30. And but I this 30. Yeah, and this 30 cuts amazing. Like, And I'm shocked. It cuts so much better. It's great. It's smooth. You and still have the fresh look to you, even though the shampoo is trash. <laughs> but we're working with what we got. <laughs> and this is a plus for me, because I do a lot of modified cuts. A lot of big dogs. Yeah. yeah. So it's definitely on my wish list right now. This is part of that cut, you guys. The seven skip. A lot of oh, you yeah, guys yeah. have been asking me about that. So we are delivering it <laughs> in this video. The best that we can. Yeah. You can see that, like, here, this back leg right here. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. Pause. You can see this back leg. He's got a lot going on. Like, it's shorter and longer. And part of that is probably because he was so matted. So she's going to try to do a modified. Probably use the seven skip to try to blend some of it in, but it's not going to be perfect because we're working with what we've got going on. You'd be surprised at how many people mess up a doodle cut, and it's not really much of a cut. It's the face. The face, I see. Yeah, um, and that's what I thought when I looked at his face. That's how a lot of the faces come out. Yeah. Can you go on with the seven? Now I'm going to do the entire leg with the seven just so you guys can see it. I mean, he's not great looking right now. But you guys don't want to see this, so I'm not going to do a guide blade on the legs. I'm just going to do the seven and shape it up. There was a guy I had posted a little snippet of me doing a seven skip 
on uh, that puppy doodle I had. And uh, I posted it on the Facebook, you know, just to get some, you know, people to come and look at our page and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And uh, I was like, you know, this is for people who are asking me how I do my legs. Just a little snippet if you want to see the whole thing. Come look, you know, watch our channel. And he commented and he was like, yeah, that's a great way to go faster. He was like, just make sure, you know, you do longer strokes and do this and do that. I'm like, yo, I wasn't asking. <laughs> I strictly was putting this out there for the people who wanted to know how I do my legs. I mean, I've been doing, using a seven for a very long time. And, uh. Everybody does stuff different. And then for the people out there who were saying, oh my God, the seven is so I was horrible. about to say that. <laughs> Just because you do not know how to use it does not mean it does not work. A lot of people are so afraid of it. And little do they know, <laughs> you're saving your life with this thing. Yeah. I do think there's caution to be had, but yeah. not any, not to a point where it's that dangerous as people, like it's not that dramatic. No. You're, we're not using a seven skips flat on the body. I mean, there's plenty of Unless space. Unless you're jamming the dog yeah. with it. There's plenty of space for you to pull back in time. And if you don't, like I did it the other day on the dog. Okay, <laughs> you take a chunk out of the leg, like the hair, that's it. I mean, we're not going, we're not gonna cut a dog open with this if we're being careful. Of course, yeah. you should be careful with any sharp tool you're using. If you're that nervous, you probably shouldn't be a good because everything we use is dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> so, depends on how you use it. Especially when you're a groomer who's been grooming for a long time and you think, you know, your way is the best way. I think people really forget that there's so many ways to yeah. do this job and nobody's way is the best way or the only way. You know, we're not here to tell you guys, hey, this is how you're supposed to do it. This is us showing you what we do yeah. on a daily basis. Exactly. Not knocking what you do on a daily basis. We don't need y'all commenting all your negativity. You can keep that to yourself. <laughs> you know, it's just, this is literally just two groomers bringing to you what we do on a daily. <laughs> We're not here to tell y'all what's wrong or right. Now, unfortunately, his legs are so choppy that it's not going to come out as smooth as I would like to. That's but good. you guys can tell for the most part. What are you doing? <laughs> Emily's a little tired. <laughs> yeah, surprise. okay. If I seem dead, it's because I am. <laughs> I had, just today, okay. Just today, I had two standard poodles, a chow puppy that was seven um. months old and a Bernadoodle that was about 90 pounds and matted, and I did an e-comb all over. Oh, no. Uh, it was a lot. <laughs> I, just, I don't know how I still have energy. Not to mention, I haven't had a day off in like four months now. <laughs> but it's okay. she's killing it. She doesn't have any kids. <laughs> she's got I a think, house. I think that's why I do it, though. I Okay, so I see people that, like you, you have a kid and you're raising her on your own, and you're still doing stuff to like make your life better. For all the single moms out there. Yeah. Shout out. I see so many single moms, so many like Rob, I always think of Rob, like single dad, but drives to Austin every Sunday right after work to go see his daughter and then comes back and works, you know, does whatever. So I see all these people doing all these things and I'm like, I don't have any kids. I have two dogs. I'm 23. Like, there's no point and no time to be lazy. Yeah. <laughs> if everyone else is doing it, working all these days, like I might as well do it while I'm young so that later on I don't have to work as hard. That's exactly, you do it while you're young. Yeah, while I'm not dying. I don't even feel like I'm young anymore. I'm 28, she's 23. <laughs> I feel like I can live my life. There's nothing left for me to look forward to. <laughs> But a sense of like, I, a part of me feels guilty when I don't push myself because I'm like, there's people out there who would one die to have a job, yeah. two are doing it harder than me and have other things to worry about. So, to me, I don't know, it makes sense. I know I'm killing myself, but I take days off when I need it. It's There's fine. But your mind. Wait, when I didn't have a kid, I was the same way. Yeah. I was working 24 seven. Yeah. Because I was a little brat, and my mom cut me off, and I wanted, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I wanted certain things, and I wanted to pay for those things and be independent. So I worked my ass off. Mm. And, but it was to the point where I let that lead into my parenting 
And when I realized that, I'm like, okay, it's time, stop. To, yeah. Yeah, it's time to stop. Because I was killing myself. And I think once I'm ready for kids and I do have kids, it will definitely slow down. But hopefully by then I have it set up to where it'll be easy. But I don't want kids anytime soon. Kids aren't for me yet. I have to because she does a lot. I just come here to look pretty. That's it. <laughs> she literally does everything. I come here, I groom, she does all the editing. Even though eventually she's going to teach me. Yeah. Just she works 24 fucking 7. I'm sorry. 24 7. <laughs> then comes home, edits one of our videos for three, four hours. Yeah. And crashes and then goes to work the next day. So I definitely have to give her a round of applause. Thank you. It will pay off one day, Chelsea, when we're YouTube rich. Yeah, I know. Y'all listen to that, okay? This is on you. I like it. It's on you. <laughs> no, we just, whenever we started the channel, we both were kind of just bored, wanting to do something different because we had been doing the same thing for a while and trying to find like an, a different outlet. We're kind of just doing it for fun, but at the same time, wanting it to take us to a different place. Because yeah. grooming is hard to do for your whole life. <laughs> I mean, I'm feeling it and I've been in it for four years and my body is dying and I'm 23. Yeah. So don't feel obligated to subscribe, but also subscribe. if you would like to support us, <laughs> please subscribe. It's appreciated. <laughs> it is. But yeah, I mean, and a majority of our subscribers are groomers and you guys already know it's a, it's a lot. And uh, this is not something I want to do for the rest of my life. You know, I put my years in it. I got 11 years now. I probably got a couple more in me, but I throw my back out four times. Yeah. You know, my back is constantly hurting. My wrist hurt. I have carpal tunnel. Like you know, eventually it's like okay, I want something to pay off. But yeah. also, I've been doing it for so long that I like to be able to teach people. Yeah. Groomers so don't teach anymore. And it's so much. It's such a good like hobby. Like if we were able to do it and not have to do it as a job, like it's so much more enjoyable. It's fun when you don't have to do 10 dogs a day, five days a week. Like even though we do work full time, like coming and being able to just chill, like we're able to just sit here, do whatever we want and just hang out and talk at the same time. It's actually pretty fun. Like, it is. <laughs> If y'all are bored and y'all are groomers and y'all have a friend, y'all should sometimes just book dogs on the side and just hang out and groom because it's kind of enjoyable. You can learn from each other too. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. But frankly, I'm glad we did this. I am too. We're dying to do it, but yeah. the hope is it'll pay off and we'll get whatever, whatever we're trying to get out of it, whatever that is. Yeah. We don't know what it is yet, but no. we'll see where it takes us. So I was talking to Brittany at work about skimming because mm -hmm. I was showing her how to do like a guard comb skim on like a golden mm -hmm. and I was watching her do it and she was thinking that she was too heavy handed but I don't think that's what it is so I was kind of telling her, trying to teach her like how to skim mm -hmm. and I was telling her that she was, when she was coming in with a clipper she was doing more of a scoop. like she was putting the blade forward and going in and coming out. Oh, no. So I was showing her <laughs> when you're skimming, you're doing straight lines, which if you watch Chelsea, that's what she's doing with the seven. She's going pretty much straight up and down and curving where she needs to, but you're never doing this. You never want to go in and scoop with it because then you're going to just take a hole out of the dog. So if you are gonna start practicing and using the seven skip, I would say one thing to keep in mind is try to keep a steady hand. If you're not steady handed yet, then maybe don't don't go in with the seven skip. Mm -hmm. Like definitely not for beginners, but if you've got a steady hand, use a light hand and do more up and down motions versus trying to scoop or you know scoop off or anything like that. Just go yeah. up and down with it. Until you get more comfortable, then you can kind of dig in a little bit more, but the only time they're scooping is when you're shaking the leg. Yeah, like the curves. But other than that, there's no scoop. <laughs> Any kind of scoop is going to be all bad. <laughs> I was doing the Yorkie in here earlier, and I was doing his face. <laughs> I was scissoring, and my mom came in, and she was going like this. And I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, slow down. <laughs> are you getting nervous? <laughs> yes. I said, I've been doing this for so long. Get out. <laughs> Like, I don't know how you do that. I'm like, you just gotta use your eyes. You gotta watch all the movements. Her reaction was hilarious. <laughs> Let 
Do you have any tips on doodle feet? So I fill out the nails. So wherever his nails are. And your scissoring. I'm at the very tip of that. Your scissoring so that you while they're on the table. Yes. And then when you do, so you scissor with his foot down first, round that out. But when you do the underneath, instead of completely taking this part out, you did that already when the dog's foot was on the ground. So all you're taking is the underneath part out. So you're not touching the outside, you'll be mm -hmm. touching the underneath. So you pick it up to scissor the back. Yeah. But scissoring the front, do it with the foot, the on, foot the on the table. Floor. Yeah. Interesting. Man, y'all. Eat a fucking drink. <laughs> <laughs> y'all know y'all like this. <laughs> like, how can you not? Like, you just uppity and act like you don't cuss. And, you know, like, grooming is just the easiest thing in the world. So I did find out, okay, we cuss a lot, obviously. Um, <laughs> I found out that you don't really have to worry about cussing until you're getting monetized. Mm -hmm. Which we're not getting monetized yet. Mm -hmm. So I think... For these videos, I'm just gonna leave it in. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so that's just how it is. I mean, unless it's like something super vulgar, which we never say anything besides like, yeah. <laughs> so for now, I'm just gonna leave them in. Y'all can just deal with it. Y'all know <laughs> when I blur it out, y'all know what we're saying anyway. So yeah. there's no point. I think in the last video, I don't know if it was the last one, but she squeaked me. <laughs> I cussed and it squeaked. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather just give me thought cuts. It was cute. <laughs> it was kind of cute. It was like it threw me off. <laughs> like, why am I squeaking? <laughs> oh my god. My mom didn't watch that video. So I had to show her. Which one was that? The um the nasty one. Oh, um, Tootie. Yeah. Uh I showed her that one and she couldn't get through it. <laughs> I said, we're not playing, we're helping it. <laughs> playing with it. We like, didn't want to touch that play dog. <laughs> like, it's a choice. When I had food poisoning. Yeah, we're playing all right. <laughs> no, it's not an option. <laughs> um, if y'all want an update on Tootie, she went to the vet after we groomed her, and the vet said she is no older than two years old. So she's only two. And also, we found out that she is heartworm negative, which is good news. But other than that, she didn't really have any big health issues from what I heard. She is on the road to recovery. We'll probably reach out to Avery and get some updated pictures for y'all eventually when she grows a little bit more hair. That was nice, though. It was nice to be able to help her. Mm -hmm. Oh, big news, guys. Um, I'm getting a standard poodle puppy. <laughs> oh, God. I groom this girl's socks and she breeds poodles and she I put a deposit on the litter. The litter's being born December 7th, but I want an all black male. So if there's not one, I'll have to wait. But if there is one, I'll get him in February and y'all can follow along because uh, me and Chelsea are going to train him to be the best groomed dog ever. Okay. So I'm excited. I've been wanting a dog that I can groom, that I can actually do haircuts to and I've been wanting a standard poodle also, and I only like black dogs, so that's just what I'm gonna get, and he'll be like our little model dog. That's the only plus about, about poodles, so you can do so much on them. Yeah, it'll be fun. And it's a good practice dog. And there's so many poodle pets that, like, especially here in Texas, you don't get. I mean, y'all know the poodle is like the grooming dog. Like, when you think of grooming, you think of a standard poodle. Like, that's the dog to have or a groom mm -hmm. if you're wanting to do, you know, those kind of cuts. And in Texas, you don't get standard poodles that are brushed out, that are long, that want a continental or, you know, some crazy cut. Nobody yeah. does that. So, I've literally done, I had one dog named Morgan that was a standard poodle that I did a continental on multiple times but he was like nine years old and his hair was kind of crazy and i've had another one that i've done you know i do palms and stuff on poodles but like i've never done anything besides that like there's so many different poodle cuts yeah and i've never done any of them in the four years that i've been doing it besides a continental and like a modified or a lamb cut a town and country yeah. and a miami 
but there's so many more and they're all so fun and different and not everybody will let you just be like hey can i just do what i want like yeah the stuff we like, want to no. do everybody's afraid of yeah it. so like why i want to do it so now i'm like you know what i'm gonna invest the couple grand and i can be a model dog why not shoot because i know it ain't gonna be me <laughs> after i gotta shoot too <laughs> You know, after my little shih tzu is gone, we're getting the fish. That's it. So Emily is all we got. Yeah. It'll be great. Let also, me just put out there that my child is waiting for my dog to die so that she can get this fish. Because the fish is way more important than the dog. Chelsea, if you don't get that little girl a fish so she can stop wishing death on your dog, <laughs> she's going to throw a down the stairs. <laughs> trying to kill my dog for months now. <laughs> Mom and Kobe dies. I swear. And if the fish dies, we can get its sister. I'm like, <laughs> it's something wrong with her. Just don't be mad when I get Jason fish for Christmas. <laughs> I'm doing it for Kobe. Well, look, it's $12 out that I saved. I'm not even mad at it, honestly. She can have her fish. She already named it. She named it Bella. Aww. She ain't got Bella. fish yet. She named it Bella. <laughs> Like, why Bella? Oh, you guys. <laughs> Our subject, I was telling Emily the other day, I had done a, a pit. Oh. A pit that came in. And when I tell you guys, I always ask people if the dog is aggressive beforehand. Hopefully, y'all tell the truth. Some people do not. So, this pit, I was alone. I was with my baby. She was really aggressive once they left. And so, Eventually, I could tell that I wasn't going to be able to do her. I'm uh, at my residence, so I was trying to get the dog to be quiet. She's barking a lot. So I took her out the cage, and I sat on the floor with her. I was still a couple feet away from her. And uh, I moved, and I guess I pissed her off by moving. I move, and she gets up and charges at me. So I had to put my foot up to stop her. I kicked her a little bit and go like, and, I mean, uh, that's all you can do. Yes. <laughs> she charged at me. I mean... And she was, a, she was a little bit, but she was a very aggressive one too. And I'm just putting the story out there to let y'all know, you dogs are not always sweet. They're not always friendly. They're not gonna act the same with us if they act with you. And when you know they're aggressive, don't send them, cause it's rude. <laughs> it is rude. That lady put my daughter and me in danger. Especially dogs like that, where it's like, you can give this dog a bath in the backyard. Yeah. It's a pit. Like my Roddy is, I wouldn't say that he's aggressive. He's very protective, especially in the house. But if we are in public and somebody comes up to us, he's not aggressive, but he'll definitely give them that look and look at me funny and be like, you know, what the hell's going on? So because I know how he is, he's not really aggressive. He's just nervous. I would never take him to somebody else to be, to have a bath. You know your dog, you can read your dog. When your dog is nervous, and has the capability of attacking somebody. Mm -hmm. You don't send them to a groomer for a bath. <laughs> yeah. You just give them a bath in the backyard, do whatever. I mean, it doesn't take that much work. And also if you want to take, if you're the kind of person that likes to spoil your dog and you want them to have a spa day, you can do that, but you need to get the dog used to it when they're a puppy. Mm -hmm. You need to bring them in so they're used to it. Put them in the train, do something. Yeah, because when you come in with a dog that doesn't even need a haircut, and is aggressive and trying to eat us, we're not gonna do that dog. No. That is a waste of time, a waste of money, it's a waste of our energy. Send it back to you and tell you to do something with it. Yeah. I was talking to Jen the other day about that and she was saying that when she was young, when she was younger, she had the time and energy to fight with like all the bad dogs and so she would never turn a dog away and you know, if they were aggressive, she would get through it. And I was like, yeah, I get that. But at the same time, it's always in the back of my head that I haven't had that career ending bite yet. Mm. I've been in it for four years and I haven't had that serious bite. I've gone to the hospital one time with a little bite just because I was scared that it was getting infected. Yeah. But it wasn't like a serious hand swollen out of work bite. Like I was still going to work. Yeah. And so every time I get a dog that's aggressive, I'll test it. But if I can't get a muzzle on it safely without the dog jumping at my face or showing me teeth to just put the muzzle on, I'm not gonna do it because I'm not mm -hmm. risking getting that bite. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just not doing it. 
it's not worth it. I tell people now, like I didn't use, I was like ten. I didn't used to turn them away that fast. Yeah. But now, shit. If I see it, no, you can have it. Yeah. There's other, people, there's other people that will fight with it, but I mean... And it's not worth putting the dog through that. No. It's no. not safe for anybody. And then people with ancient dogs. Y'all just put those little things through the worst, like bringing them in, they're on their last leg. What is wrong with you? <laughs> oh my poor thing! It had its whole stroke before it got here, y'all took it to the groomer. And That's always the worst, people. and they're like... This might be his last time. And then you see them again the next month. Don't know how much longer he's going to make it. And every time they come in, they just say something new about, yeah. oh, this might be the last one. I'm like, can you stop? <laughs> like, it's going to happen here the more you say it. And I don't want that. That also is another thing that I have not had to go through. I have not had a dog die on my table. I hope it doesn't happen. I don't want to say yet. But I know, I mean, I'm prepared for that. You know, I know it's a possibility. But I don't know. I'm just new to it. And I don't want to be traumatized. <laughs> I had, and it was not my fault. It was, and this is why I did not use the groomer's helper. Uh, I was a bather at the time, and the groomer put my dog on the groomer's helper because the dog was aggressive, and she put him too tight, and he just fell out, and he choked himself. Was he a young dog? He was a baby. Oh, gosh. And That's she hard. had to do CPR on the damn thing, and she eventually brought it back to life, and after that, I took that thing off my table and I never used it since. So I have a big tolerance for bad dogs. I won't even muzzle bad dogs. Yeah. But I'm, I don't use those things. I think those things are just, no, they freak me out, but I had a bad experience with them. Yeah, there's definitely, we had a groomer that worked with us for a little while. Crazy. Uh, not to, <laughs> she was crazy, babe. <laughs> That's besides the point. She, I use a groomer helper. But I only use it on certain dogs for a certain amount of time. If the dog is still being bad, I'll take it off and just send the dog home. You know, I'm not going to fight with the dog if he's throwing himself around, choking himself out. But I do think there's a right time to use it and a right dog to use it on. A lot of people don't know that you're not supposed to use it on dogs that are smaller than 10 pounds and the position that it's supposed to be in. So if you are using a groomer's helper, definitely look into the actual safety stuff that's in the packet with the groomer's helper whenever you get it. And don't just put it on a random dog whenever you don't know what you're doing. Like a muzzle or like anything else, it can definitely cause harm. And frankly, if you have to do all that, choke the dog out, just don't do it. That's what I don't get a lot of groomers will push the dogs to like their limit and what's the point? And because half the time you're still not charging a special handling. Yeah. <laughs> you're just doing it for fun or for your pride. And stressing yourself out like, and the dog. Just to say, oh yeah, I did it. I don't care about that. And you're up and everything. And yeah. You're like, why? <laughs> I do not care. I take pride in my work, but not that much pride to where I'm not gonna let a dog walk out because, you know, for any reason. Or if another group walks it and they feel like struggling, sure. Yeah. Go on ahead, stupid. <laughs> I'm gonna sit here and watch you do it. Because when the dogs are so bad and get to a certain point, there's nothing you can do to help them besides them going to a vet and getting put to sleep to get groomed. Yeah. And if you can't do that, I mean, you're either gonna cut the dog, you're gonna hurt yourself, you're gonna hurt the dog. There's no good outcome. And like I said, half the time people don't charge the special handling, so you're doing this dog for 40 bucks. And then the second you slip up, your finger's gone. <laughs> and then you have a vet bill. I mean, you have a hospital bill and a you're out of bill. work. <laughs> How you know you work with dogs for too long? And then you're out of work for a month because you lost your finger and you gotta learn how to groom again. All because you wanted to fight with that little dog and you slipped up for two seconds. It wasn't worth it. Like, that's how quick it happens. That's why I'm like, as soon as I see it, I'll try it, I'll test them. And if they keep fighting, then it's like, okay, because you never know. You literally can, you can read dogs to a certain extent, but you never know when they're going to snap or charge at you or jump at you. And if you're too late, mm -hmm. you're fucked. <laughs> and half, some of them don't show anything. Yeah. And you could do something and next thing you know, you add it up. They yeah. capture. And that's always a risk. But like when you're seeing it in your face and they're showing you their teeth, it's like, why would you even <laughs> tip that? <laughs> like, why? That face is coming out cute. I mean, it's short, but it's cute. Yeah. There's only so much I can do to it. <laughs> I'm trying to round it out so that it looks fuller. Look at how that square. I don't know what they were going for. <laughs> Stop looking. He's getting He's got annoyed with me. Eyes. Come here. Yeah, I think the big thing with doodles is definitely not taking too much, like, corners of the eyes and bridge of the nose. Mm hmm. And the like, size. Just who? Yeah. Why? Like, I can see taking the top short or the beard short, but to me, a doodle head should be 
full cheeks, mm -hmm. full beard, or not beard, but like bridge of the nose, all that should be full. Yeah. Okay, now it's a certain roundness to their head. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're doing a modified cut on them and it's a longer cut. Their head needs to look a certain way. Their head can be tiny and then, you know, their body's all full and dramatic. Also notice that she doesn't really trim into the beard. See some people that like go in and layer like the the muzzle how you would like the top of the head. To me, it doesn't look right. I feel like you should scissor it down. Yeah. Don't fully chop into it. Just scissor it down. Is there anything especially if they have straight hair, it's already done yeah, it's falling. Yeah. yeah. There's no point in combing it up and chopping into it because mm -hmm. it just looks bad. All you're just doing is rounding it out at this point. That's why I like these things because they have the shape to them already. You just have to know what to do with yeah. it. I'm sorry, we're almost done. Don't judge my shears, y'all. I gotta get them shut through. You look so cute. Yay. Much better. Did you end up just doing the seven on the legs? Mm. Just skin. Mm hmm. To blend it. But they're so choppy because of. Oh, well, yeah, other yeah. But it's yeah. still, for the most part, they came out pretty decent. Yeah. It so is. let's recap. What are your tips on doodles? I would tips? have to say the most important don't shave the. the Bridge of the nose. Yes. This is not meant to be shaved on a doodle, never, unless a customer asks for it for some odd reason. It's never meant to be shaved. So, you people who are doing it, don't. This isn't a good example. <laughs> <laughs> but I would have to say, I don't know, but doodles just have certain little aspects to them that are just not. It's mainly a face. A doodle cut is the face altogether, the you know? Should be fairly yeah, the body is what you make it, or you know, what they ask for. The doodle is all in the face. Yeah, I think so too. So and we always that. hear, don't no poodle my doodle. Yeah. And I think that goes along with don't shave the bridge of the nose, don't shave too deep in the corners of the eyes if you are going to shave, which I just use thinning shears, I think most people do on doodles. Mm -hmm. But if you are going to shave, just do the corners of the eyes and that's it. And don't overdo it. You yeah. don't need to overdo it. Once Any you take out the corner of the eyes, Literally, the shape is there. You just have to know how to work it. His hair is straight, so his head was fairly easy. It's just the choppiness that I'm trying to get to go away. But, okay, he's getting away. <laughs> he looks better, though. He's cute. But hopefully we can get some more heads in there. I think the heads are really important. The body is one thing, but I think people forget about the heads. Yeah. And I see a lot of pictures, a lot of heads, and... They have a lot to be desired. And I had people reach out to me who wanted me to bring their dog. I took it to Petco and maybe they chopped it up or yeah. they cut it or the head looked really bad. Oh, I had one lady send me a picture of it. Oh. <laughs> Not saying remember that Petco or PetSmart is bad. No. But y'all gotta get it together. No, I think the issue there, it's not necessarily people are bad, it's after the training, what the groomers choose, like what path they choose to take. PetSmart and Petco are definitely go, 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 do 12 dogs a day. Who cares? As long as it looks all right, send it out. Unless you make the choice to say, okay, I've been trained. I'm going to work on myself. Because I came from PetSmart, but everybody around me was like, go, 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 10 dogs a day. I saw that happen a lot. I think that the problem also is for the people who use their school, their school is so limited on what they teach you. Yeah, it is. And you've got to choose to continue the education because they teach you the very the yeah. very minimum and then it's up to you to watch youtube videos and do research and Figure decide that you want to keep learning yeah because <clears throat> when you go to school for pet smart or pet code, you don't have your style yet you don't have your no your oomph yet yeah you have what they taught you and then and same anywhere it don't matter where you go you have to gain that on your own yeah it's up to you where you want to it takes it. years to do that yeah but what they leave you with is i think it's trash honestly i think that they need to do a lot better with their teaching well and i think it depends on the district because yeah. every district has their different trainer it depends on the district because like my trainer 
she definitely cared a lot about what she did. And my boss, who was my salon leader, also cared a lot about what she did. But there's so many out there that are like, go, 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 hurry up, here's the basics, get out of my face. Yeah. Like, that they don't take the time to learn yeah. or teach. Which is why I wanted, you know, I was so passionate about a grooming facility instead yeah. of a shop. Techno can be good, but it depends on the people that are in charge and what you choose to do with it. Because honestly, I don't think I'd be the way I was if the lady that taught me wasn't as hard on me as she was. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of how my salon leader was, which is not very common for PetSmart's. She was just super passionate about teaching. I thankfully got taught better. Thank you, Nikita. <laughs> And I definitely don't mind that. I don't mind being able to teach. My problem is I have I lack patience. <laughs> so before I open up a place, I really need to find it. Because I'm a perfectionist. If I tell you something, I need you to get it right there. Yeah. And don't ask questions. <laughs> so <laughs> once I get past that part, I can open me up with that facility, you know. But grooming for the rest of my life is not an option, y'all. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to take some pictures of her real quick, and then you can come get them, okay? We are going to be doing a Christmas video with, we think, more of a like, creative grooming style. Mm -hmm. um, but that's all we've got planned right now. So if y'all do have some real quests, we're getting some dogs booked, but we don't know what kind of haircuts or what y'all are looking for. So let us know in the comments and we will try to get that done for you. Yes, and don't forget, please subscribe, like, share. And follow us on our social media, um, Instagram and Facebook at Good Times Grooming. And we will see y'all next week in the next video. Bye, y'all. Bye. All right, you go home.